Welcome back on the fourth episode of the Switch Mode Power Supply Repair Series as done by the donkey. In the previous video we have started discussing the properties and functionality of different type of inductors. We have shown that if we send an electric current through an inductor, temporarily it becomes a type of magnet called an electromagnet. However, once we switch off the external current, then this magnetization is gonna be lost, so the inductor is demagnetized. To put the previous experiment in a graphical form, like a circuit diagram, this is here the electronic representation of an inductor in a circuit, and these are the two wires which are leading to the two terminals of the inductor. In series with the inductor, we have here an ampermeter, which is then showing us the amount of electric current going through this circuit. Since we right now don't have any kind of power supply here, the ampermeter is not showing of course anything, and our inductor is not being magnetized. So just to remind you from the previous video, this was the time when the inductor was not interacting with the ferromagnetic screw and that is because at this stage the inductor is at rest, it is not being yet magnetized. Next then we're gonna attach a battery here which is represented by this sign in electronics. Once we attach this power supply or battery, we're gonna have of course an electric current flowing through this circuit. According to the convention, the electric current is flowing from the positive terminal of the battery, then through this circuit and finally it flows to the negative terminal of the battery or the power supply. This electric current flowing through the circuit is then represented here by this green arrow and the direction of the arrow is showing the direction of the electric current in our ampermeter then we would be able to really read now the actual magnitude of this electric current. Right now we don't really care about that. As I have showed you, once we have an electric current flowing through an inductor, the inductor will then become magnetized and that is because it will start to build up a magnetic field around it and this magnetic field gonna be concentrated and accumulated inside the magnetic core which is in the center of the copper winding and this process through which an inductor becomes a electromagnet is called the process of magnetization. We have also seen that once we take away now this external battery then the current which flows in the circuit stops flowing and the magnetization disappears and this is because this magnetic field which have been accumulated is so called collapsing itself and practically at the end of the day the inductor will be then fully demagnetized and this process through which the magnetic field collapses in the core of the inductor is called the demagnetization. You see that there is no battery anymore and there is no current flowing through this circuit because the circuit is not closed and we don't have a power supply. From the previous video you might recall the similarity between a inductor and a simple mechanical spring. So with a mechanical spring I wanna show you the concept of magnetic saturation. Namely when I totally compress now this spring and you can clearly see with your eyes that from this stage on no matter how much force I apply I would need to apply insane force to actually compress the spring even more. And this is the point here when we say that the spring is completely saturated and this saturation will be highly important for magnetic materials and for inductors as I will show you later. At the point of the saturation practically what happens is that we reach the absolute maximum value what can be accumulated in form of this elastic or deformation energy inside the spring and this means that no matter what we do this external mechanical energy simply can no longer be transformed into more of this elastic energy. In the light of this aforementioned discussion let us then think about how would we 
characterize this type of compression when we start with the spring, then we slightly compress it and finally we arrive to this stage when it is fully saturated with force. Let us show this in the form of a two-dimensional diagram. On this diagram then I'm trying to show what would happen if we would measure the external mechanical force which is shown at this axis versus if we would measure the actual compression let's say in millimeters or inches it's entirely up to you when the spring is not yet compressed it is at rest we need a very small amount of force to compress it a little bit which is not surprising since at this stage there is not yet elastic energy being built up inside the spring when we apply more and more force, we of course compress the spring together more and more and we need to apply a higher force to compress it together. There is absolutely no surprise in this curve. It is clearly looking like a hockey stick because here at this stage it is almost like a flat line and then suddenly it goes up in a very very steep angle because here somewhere we have this point of saturation and behind this point you remember we can no longer compress the spring anymore. We would need something like a hydraulic press or something similar. The very same concept would apply also on an inductor. So so I just changed the name of the axis. In this case, on this axis we are measuring the external electric current which we are pumping through the inductor and on this axis we are measuring the magnetization of this inductor. And of course we see the same thing just as for the mechanical spring that at the beginning we need a low current to produce a considerable magnetization. There is more and more magnetic field being built up inside the core material and after a while we completely saturate magnetically the magnetic core. Right after we have reached this point of magnetic saturation you can notice that the electric current flowing through the circuit goes radically out of the normal range of a semiconductor. So let us suppose that this is here a field effect transistor which is then turning on a little bit of current going through an inductor, if we would reach magnetic saturation inside the inductor, at this point practically we would burn out our field effect transistor. Just to remind you, in a switch mode power supply this is exactly what we are doing, namely we are using a field effect transistor and via this transistor then we provide a current going through an inductor since we cannot reach magnetic saturation because otherwise our field effect transistor would literally just blow up. We need to take care that we provide a special signal to it, a pulse width modulated signal that the field effect transistor need to turn on and turn off very very quickly. Through switching on and off the field effect transistor very quickly we can ensure that we always operate at this almost linear stage of the curve and we never come dangerously close to this portion where we know that the current would go completely wild and it would cause our transistor to burn up. In the second experiment what we're gonna perform on this inductor again I have the two terminals and the two terminals are directly connected to a ampere meter what you see here. I have to point out that there is absolutely no battery or external power source in this circuit. Of course there is no current flowing through the circuit. As you see the multimeter is oscillating between 0 and 1 microamps and that is just due to the inaccuracy of my multimeter. Next then I'm gonna hold down the inductor so it doesn't fly away on me and then I'm coming in with a strong permanent magnet and I'm gonna move this permanent magnet on top of the inductor. As you can clearly see by moving the magnet on top of the inductor I can generate electricity or electric current going through the circuit and if I stop with the magnet and I take it away then the current goes down back to zero. So as I told you this should be zero as you see now this is just the inaccuracy of the multimeter. In the experiment which we just performed what we had at the beginning was an inductor where both of the terminals of the inductor have been then connected to the ampermeter 
transistor and of course when the inductor is at rest there is absolutely no current flowing through this circuit since there is no energy in the circuit. Next then we have taken an external magnet what is represented here so this is the north and south pole and this is the magnetic field of the magnet which is a permanent magnet and then we were approaching this permanent magnet and we were moving it closer and further away from this inductor here. Upon mechanically moving now this permanent magnet around the inductor what we found is that actually there is strangely current flowing through the circuit which is really a weird phenomena because look we have absolutely no power supply or battery or anything in this circuit so the question is then how we do get current flowing through. The phenomena through which we create something which wasn't really there previously is called by the physicists a induction and in this case since this is electronic current and magnetic flux change or magnetic field change it is called the electromagnetic induction and the process through which we get a current flowing through an inductor when we change the magnetic field around it is called the electromagnetic induction itself. Almost all the electric power what we use nowadays in our household have been generated through this very same process where practically there is a magnet which is then being rotated either by a motor or in an electric power plant some sort of uh, energy carrier for the sake of an example let's say that this is a hydro plant so we have a huge reservoir where the water is then dropping down several meters and through this drop is able to rotate some sort of turbine and the turbine is then coupled to a magnet and since the magnet is rotating it means that the magnetic field will always change because as you can imagine when this thing rotates here the whole magnetic field will change through this change in the magnetic field we're gonna induce then electric current through the inductor your household is then being linked up to this huge coil here which is in the power plant and then practically through these wires then in your household all your electric appliances are consuming this electric current which have been generated hundreds of miles away from you. In reality though we use so called transformers between the generator of the power plant and your household. I'm gonna show you in future episodes how a transformer work. So let us come back to a simple inductor and the electromagnetic induction. As you remember I always said that there have to be a change in the magnetic field and this is highly important because it means that if there is no change in the magnetic field then we are not getting new current induced through this inductor the current will drop down to zero if we are not changing here the magnetic field. In the previous video I have showed you the cycle of energy transformation and energy conservation in the case of a mechanical spring. As you remember we have a mechanical spring if we put in external mechanical energy this accumulates in form of a deformation energy which then always pushes against the mechanical energy and when we release the spring then all this deformation energy will be transformed back in form of a mechanical force or mechanical energy which points exactly in the opposite direction compared to the original mechanical force. Let us then go through the cycle of energy transformation and energy conservation in the case of an inductor. We have started with an inductor at rest where there is absolutely no electric current going through it and also it is not magnetized. Next we have seen that if we now attach a battery to this circuit then due to the electric current flowing through the inductor then the electric current gonna generate a magnetic field around the inductor. So what we do is that we take electric energy here from the battery and we transform it here and we accumulate 
transmitted in form of magnetic energy, the major portion of this magnetic energy gonna be accumulated inside the magnetic core itself because the very functionality of the magnetic core is to concentrate and accumulate the magnetic field which is forming around an inductor. If now we would remove this power supply or battery and then make a short circuit here instead of having the battery, this is what you see here, then we still have this magnetization inside the core material. However, we no longer have the external electric current like we had here, so we know that very soon this magnetization or the magnetic field inside this core gonna collapse. Losing the magnetization through this collapse is called the demagnetization. Due to the demagnetization, our inductor is practically feeling that there is a magnetic field which is changing around the inductor. And let me remind you, whenever we change the magnetic field around an inductor, then we have this so-called electromagnetic induction. And the electromagnetic induction gonna actually induce a electric current going through this circuit. When it comes to the direction of the electric current, what we induce at this stage, one can clearly see that it flows exactly in the opposite direction compared to the direction of the original external electric current what we were feeding in into the inductor. Finally then we're gonna end up with absolutely no magnetization and no current flowing through this circuit. Compared to the mechanical spring we have a rather similar picture overall. You might ask what kind of sense did it make to go through all this series of energy transformations and look at the direction of the original current compared to the induced current and I can tell you, if you understand this way of energy transformation, you have a completely solid understanding of how does a switch mode power supply operates whenever it comes to a buck or a so-called boost converter. To sum up this video, we have practically showed all type of energy transformation and conservation inside an inductor. We have also then explained why we need to do a very quick on and off switch of different type of switching elements like field effect transistors. Since in a switch mode power supply all what we do is we are transforming electric current into a magnetic field and then this magnetic field is being collapsed and transformed back into an electric current, it is highly important to study the magnetic core material as well. And the next video then gonna do exactly this. So we are gonna look at low frequency 50 to 60 hertz traditional transformers and we are gonna also look at high frequency switch mode power supply cores. Many thanks for watching, stay tuned then for the next follow up video in this series.